The most astonishing news from Russia is the fact that Prigozhin remains in the country, defying his agreement with Putin. It appears that Putin is unable to take significant action against him. Furthermore, there is intriguing footage and information concerning Prigozhin after his residence was raided by the Russian military. As the NATO summit approaches, the risk surrounding the Zaporizhia power plant escalates, with Chinese President Xi Jinping stepping in to warn Putin about the potential for a nuclear attack. Lastly, Russia's economy continues to decline, as the value of the ruble shows no signs of slowing its descent. In today's video, we will delve into all of these developments. Remember to click the like button and assist me in pleasing the influential YouTube algorithm. Now, let's commence with the topic of Prigozhin's ongoing presence in Russia. Yesterday, I reported that he had returned to St. Petersburg briefly to gather his important belongings before heading to Belarus, where he was supposed to be exiled. However, it seems that this is not the case. President Lukashenko of Belarus confirmed today that Prigozhin is indeed still in Russia. A Belarusian telegram channel associated with Lukashenko's press service quotes him stating that Prigozhin is currently in St. Petersburg, where the Wagner PMC and Prigozhin are located. Lukashenko emphasizes that this is a Russian company, so the matter is not within his jurisdiction. To the best of my knowledge, his fighters are in their camps, and as for Prigozhin himself, he is situated in St. Petersburg, not in Belarusian territory. Subsequently, the Russian government was questioned about Prigozhin's whereabouts in Russia, but they claimed to have no knowledge. Dmitry Peskov, Putin's press secretary, stated that they do not monitor his movements, lacking both the means and the desire to do so. It is peculiar that the Russian government shows little concern for the whereabouts of someone who recently attempted to overthrow them. Speculation suggests that Prigozhin might be seeking reconciliation with Putin, endeavoring to persuade him through intermediaries that he was never disloyal. It is possible that my reaction was exaggerated, and I became excessively enthralled by the events unfolding. I never intended it to be seen as a challenge to your power. However, there is no indication that the FSB has received any updates on this matter. Recently, the FSB conducted a raid on Prigozhin's extensive estate in St. Petersburg, and somehow, the footage of the operation was leaked to the public. $111 million in cash, weapons disguises, and a counterfeit passport were discovered. Reports suggest that Pagosian had possession of these items, but they have all been returned, or so the Russian media claims. However, there are conflicting accounts. Pagosian alleges that his belongings, including valuable items and money, were stolen by Russian security forces. He claims to have recorded the thefts on hidden networked cameras and plans to release the footage soon. In the video, Viewers can see the abundance of valuable items at his house, such as gold bars, stacks of cash, and an impressive wig collection. Unfortunately, some of the items allegedly got stuck to the fingers of the searchers. Prigozhin intends to announce that law enforcement stole valuable items and money during the search of his property, providing the alleged surveillance camera footage as evidence. It is not uncommon for the Russian police to pilfer from searched properties, but this situation appears to expose more significant corruption within the FSB. As for General Sotofikin, he remains missing and even missed his wife's birthday. Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu personally oversees the investigation into Servigan, who has fallen victim to online scammers and possible Ukrainian operatives impersonating him. Telegram sources report that General Sergei Sorovichin, the head of the Russian Air Force, has yet to resurface. He failed to attend his wife's birthday celebration on July 4th, raising concerns about his well-being. Family members, including close friends and colleagues, have stopped communicating, indicating a troubling situation for Sorovichin. He is currently in isolation while undergoing verification of his subordinates. Reports linking Sorovichin to the Prigozhin mutiny are being investigated, with Shoigu overseeing the process. Exploiting Sorovichin's sudden fame, Russian online scammers have created telegram channels impersonating him, attracting hundreds of thousands of subscribers. Deputy Air Force Chief Andrei Ubin denies any association between these channels and Sergei Vladimirovich, stating that he has no involvement with them. Additionally, there are four other channels claiming affiliation with Sorovichin, some of which disseminate discrediting information. Russia's Eura news outlet indicates that the primary channel in question may be a scam 
highlighting that its owners earn approximately 35,000 rubles, around $385, for each daily appearance of one or two advertisements. The Russian government suggests that at least one smaller channel could be a Ukrainian propaganda outlet. Alexander Malkovich, deputy chairman of the Commission of the Civic Chamber of the Russian Federation, believes that Ukrainian centers for information and psychological operations may be involved in these channels. If Sotovikin reappears or if there are further updates on his disappearance, I will ensure you are informed. Additionally, it seems that Wagner is still present in Russia despite the agreement between Putin and Prigogine. Reports suggest that some Wagner offices have continued their operations despite the deal. Wagner PMC actively recruits within Russia and shares the Mokino military base with Russian military intelligence, Spetsnaz GRU. A Russian journalist contacted Wagner to inquire about joining them, expressing interest in signing up with the PMC. The conversation involved providing personal information via WhatsApp, confirming Russian citizenship, and being instructed to read the provided information carefully before proceeding to join. The journalist was advised not to discard their travel tickets, as the company would reimburse their travel expenses with the first paycheck. Ho du formulaire. I recently heard Putin mentioning the presence of Wagner and potential traders. Rest assured, everything is fine here, and there is no reason for anyone to come after me. If we were traders, we would not have chosen to stay in Russia. Do you have any other inquiries? There are rumors suggesting that everyone is required to go to Belarus and that Krasnodar will be abandoned. I want to assure you that these rumors are false. All the decisions made thus far have been for the better. It's important to note that not all information broadcasted on television is accurate and can be misleading. So, rest assured, there is no need to worry about Belarus. Everything is still in place, including our base in the Krasnodar region, specifically in the small town of Mokino. One can only speculate that Prigozhin must possess some highly damaging leverage over Putin for him to blatantly disregard their agreement. Moving on, there is significant news emerging from Russia regarding their activities around the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. As previously mentioned, if Russia were to cause an explosion at the plant, it could have global ramifications, extending beyond Ukraine. It seems that China is taking proactive steps to prevent a potential nuclear disaster. Xi Jinping personally warned Vladimir Putin against the use of nuclear weapons in Ukraine. Hopefully this stern warning from a close friend will dissuade Putin from making a catastrophic global mistake. Staying informed and aware of the latest developments is crucial, especially when it comes to matters that have far-reaching implications. Our channel is dedicated to providing accurate and insightful information on a wide range of subjects. By subscribing and liking our channel, you not only support our efforts, but also encourage us to continue delivering valuable content. Together, we can stay informed, engage in meaningful discussions, and foster a community of knowledge seekers. Join us on this journey, subscribe, and hit the like button to show your support for our channel.